Welcome to week 25 of Instant Value Handicapping. I'm Roger LeBlanc, author of The Punter's Tale, A Better's Quest for Racetrack Profits. In this book, I examine how to identify false favorites in a horse race and what to do once you find them. Uh, generally, the advice is try to bet most or all of your money in races containing false favorites. In the book, we came up with 83% uh, success rate in identifying false favorites in the five tracks we looked at. Uh, we're hitting close to that in this series now. Over 25 weeks we um, have identified false favorites successfully 80% of the time. That means you can bet into races where the favorite wins only 20% of the time, which is about half of what they usually win. Uh, that opens the door to some good prices. Uh, we have been trying to cash in on those. We're falling a little bit short. We have a negative ROI of about 2%. Um, we've looked at six tracks and about 60 races over this 25 weeks. We're showing a positive ROI at three of those six tracks at Evangeline, at the fairgrounds, and at Saratoga where we went for the first time last week. We were one for one there. Um, I believe it was an eight to five second choice on the line came in at seven to two so we got our winner we got our price we've uh, started off on the right foot at saratoga so we're going to go back there this week take a look at wednesday's card wednesday august 11th saratoga hit subscribe we also have uh the fastest two minutes in handicapping which goes up on this site every Friday we're taking a look at one of the major stakes races in the country every Saturday um, so hit subscribe you don't want to miss that and uh, we'll be right back to take a look at Saratoga <laughs> on Wednesday at Saratoga where we found one false favorite that we feel confident in betting against. That's in race five. It's a New York state bred made in special weights. They're running a mile and an eighth. Uh, it's a good distance test for these young horses. The morning line favorite is number four, Blitz, to win at six to five. We're going to take a look at two other horses here. The one horse, Tivoli Twirl, who's the second choice at eight to five. Number two, Anejo, long shot at 12 to one. So uh, let's start off with the favorite. Why is the favorite false here? Um, Bliss to Win has had uh, five races, has never really threatened the winner. Closest finish was a couple of races back, finished second by a length and a half. The main problem here is this horse really doesn't have any early speed. So this stretching um, him out to a mile and an eighth, hoping that gets him closer to the pace, um, I don't think there's all that much hope of that. He has sprint breeding. He's a sprint sire. Um, has not shown speed in sprints. The uh, stretch out will get him a little bit closer. But this is um, made in special weights. There are some, usually some decent horses uh, in these races. So I don't think his task really gets any easier here. Uh, I think um, the uh, other problem is the track Saratoga in the 30 or so races they've had at a mile and eighth in this meet, 48% of them have been won by early speed horses. Another 35, 38% have been won by pressers. So lack of early speed uh, has not been a successful way to run this race. Uh, late closers are not doing well. So fortunately for us, the... Uh, Likely speed in this race is drawn to the inside. That race starts right on the turn, so uh, we're going to hug the rail with number one, Tivoli Twirl, at 8-5. to five. This is an interesting horse. Started out in the Bob Baffert barn, showed great speed, great early speed in two races at Santa Anita. Um, that's another interesting thing. This is a New York State bred horse, and they thought he was good enough that he could run against open company at Santa Anita. Um, he... Flashed early speed in his two races there, faded badly both times. They send him back to New York, uh, John Terranova takes over, and it looks like he's trying to harness that speed a little. His races here, he's taking the horse off the pace, 
uh, had him close his uh, first race against New York State Breds. And the horses he was closing against both came back to win next time out. So he was running against some pretty good horses there. Um, another sprint after that showed a little more early speed and faded. If you look at his workouts, they scream distance. Uh, five of his eight workouts are at five furlongs or longer. They've been preparing this horse to stretch out. Here's his chance. He's got the rail. He could very well have the lead. Um, it all looks pretty good there. And Joel Rosario takes the mount, so um, you got a rider who can get it done. Uh, number two, Anejo, a bit of a long shot here. Uh, they add Lasix, they add blinkers, they take them off the turf, um, and put them on dirt. A lot of changes going on here, and this horse needs a lot of changes because his first two races are horrible. Um, but he's an expensive horse, $150,000 with somebody paid for him. Um, it's got a good trainer, Junior Alvarado takes him out. Uh, he showed a little bit of early speed in his uh, debut, which was a six furlong turf sprint. They, it's another horse. Looks like they've been preparing him for a stretch out. Um, so those are our two picks here in the um, fifth race at Saratoga. And uh, we're being selective. So that's all we have for this week. And um, join us again next week by hitting subscribe. You can go to LazyBetterUSA.com to purchase a postage-free copy of The Punter's Tale. Thanks for watching.